we used to think that one of the things that made humans fundamentally different from other species was that we were the ones that, that made tools, man the tool maker, and that it was that tool making know-how that enabled us to kind of uh, have all this technology tra to transform the planet. And then it was discovered that, that chimpanzees made simple tools. And then Gavin Hunt discovered that uh, not our close primate relatives, but a, a bird brain creature, this one species of crow in New Caledonia also made tools. Um, and the kind of puzzle was how could something that's so evolutionarily remote from us have this seemingly complex human-like cognition. They make two kinds of tools. Uh, I'm holding them here. One from sticks and the other from pandanus uh, leaves, which are uh, kind of wide, flat leaves that have little barbs on the edge. And sometimes, in one part of New Caledonia, they can craft hooks on the end of the stick tools, um, but most of the time they just use uh, uh, break off a stick. And uh, in other parts of New Caledonia, they make these pandanus tools, um, and sometimes they make stepped versions where they are um, got a narrow at the, at the working end and kind of wider at the base. Uh, but in lots of parts they just make a simple wide tool like this. And they use these little barbs just on the edges of the pandanus to uh, extract slugs and other invertebrates. How it was discovered that there were these different traditions in uh, tool making technology was that Gavin Hunt did this incredibly arduous uh, trekking all over New Caledonia uh, looking not at what the birds were doing but at the pandanus bushes and what he found was there was an artifact record if you like left on the pandanus bushes after they've chopped out a pandanus tool you can see what the birds have been uh, doing by looking at the sort of negative image on the trees and what he did was to collect whole lots of those counterparts across the length and breadth of New Caledonia and found these striking geographic differences in the types of pandanus tools they were making and the shape of the pandanus tools they were making. Now here's just a, a simple wide strip, but in some parts of New Caledonia they make a, a much thinner version, and in some parts of New Caledonia they make a, a tapered version, where they do a cut in and then tear, a cut in and then tear, another cut in and then tear, rip along, then jump down the other end of the pandanus, cut in and tear and join up the rips. So you're left with a tool that's thick at the end they hold it on and pointed at the kind of working tip. And these different types of tools um, seem like they might be different traditions uh, reflecting uh, that are passed on by social learning uh, in those different locations because they don't relate to the to the kind of pandanus at those different locations and there doesn't seem to be any other obvious ecological correlates so we think the most plausible possibility is that these uh, are social traditions passed on by some form of social learning uh, and that perhaps what we've seen is a case of incremental cultural evolution. Because lots of species, they can have different social traditions, but those social traditions don't accumulate improvements in design. They don't ratchet up in the way that human technological evolution uh, improves cumulatively. So this computer is an awful lot better than the one before it, and it's an awful lot more powerful than the ones of 10 years ago. One of the really intriguing things is how come there's just this one species of crow in the world on you know little part of the Pacific that makes these incredibly elaborate tools? I mean, there are lots of different crow species around the world. Uh, how come they don't make tools? And one explanation is, well, maybe there are parts of New Caledonia that's very dry, and therefore you need kind of mechanisms for extracting insects when things are pretty dry. And I don't really find that very convincing because there's lots of parts of the world where there are crows and it's dry. I think of Australia, which is kind of you know permanently drying out uh, and the crows don't don't make tools there so I think that's a sort of very uh, partial explanation uh, so 
some of the research that might go on is to say, well, is there something different about the crow brains or about the mechanisms that they uh, of social learning that they have that enables them to kind of pass on this tool making know how that um, other species don't have. So maybe other species of crow have kind of used objects but have never been able to kind of pass on that that tool making kind of know how. Uh, so we don't know the answer to that, uh, and it, but it's incredibly intriguing. And I guess from a human centered point of view, you might say, why is it really that only humans that have such complex cognitive abilities like, like language? And with the crows, you might say, why is it amongst all the complex bird species, crows and parrots, it's really only the Nucleidonian crows that make these very elaborate tools. But when you did the third year course that I begin with 2001, with the apes kind of banging and then using them That's to bang each other. Moment. Yeah. So you jokingly refer to sort of 2001, the moment in 2001 when the monolith, the movie, the Stanley Kubrick movie, where the monolith uh, comes in and the, the, uh, the primates uh, pick up a bone and start to use it to smash things and then start to use it to smash each other. Uh, and jokingly wonder whether there's some sort of miraculous event or some divine inspiration that goes on to make this one species. Uh, manufacture tools. I don't think so. I don't think we want uh, to look for miracles in terms of explaining the crow's behavior. We want to look for sort of material uh, scientific explanations. Uh, so we look at the brains, we look at the culture, and we you know try and work out what's different between these species perhaps and some closely related species. And that's the way evolutionary biologists try to answer these things without miracles. A PhD student, Jennifer Holtzand, has been testing to what extent they really understand how these tools work. So they're using these tools with these little barbs on all day, every day, but do they really know that the barbs are important? Do they really understand how they, how they work? So Jennifer just did some simple experiments where she gave them a choice between two holes with food in it, and in one case the, the uh, tool was facing the right orientation so the barbs would hook up, and in another case, side by side it, uh, they were facing the wrong way and therefore wouldn't be functional. And basically the crows paid no attention to the orientation of the barbs. So I guess one of the kind of interesting things about science is that your expectations can often turn out wrong. Uh, that's why we do experiments. So we thought, look, they're using these tools all the time, they've got to understand how they're working. But it, it looked like they didn't pay any attention to the orientation of the barbs. And not only that, when we gave them a choice between a tool with barbs and a tool without barbs, most of the birds didn't pay any attention to that either. So it seems that they've just learnt to kind of do these procedures without really understanding the kind of functionality of the hooks. Part of the trick to doing research on animal cognition is, is realising that uh, there's... A, a, we should not actually assume that either like us or they're really dumb and following very simple kind of mechanisms. There might be me mechanisms, cognitive mechanisms, of intermediate complexity. So designing experiments that can perhaps tease out some of those things I think is an important challenge for the future.